All right, so this is the third and final lecture about the male reproductive tract. And in this lecture, we're going to be talking about the autonomic innervation of the male reproductive organs. So back to this diagram, you may recognize this from the autonomics of the pelvis lecture that we talked about earlier. And we made it uh, in addition to it where we have a cross section of the shaft of the penis here. And so what happens here is you have the, if you remember, the inferior hypogastric plexus is the main hub, both for superior or sympathetic fibers that come from the superior hypogastric plexus, so sympathetic. And then you have parasympathetic fibers, which come from the sacral spinal cord, and they travel through these, these pelvic splanchnic nerves here and make their way up here. So those are parasympathetics. Um, Remember, sympathetics can also come through this, the sympathetic chain and then through the sacral splanchnic nerves as well. Now, what you have here is, is you have a prostatic plexus. And so what is this is a smaller nerve plexus that receives fibers from the inferior hypogastric plexus. So nerve fibers travel from the inferior hypogastric plexus, and these are carrying efferent parasympathetic fibers. And what they do is, is they come... Um, into the penis shaft and they stimulate uh, these parasympathetic fibers. They stimulate relaxation of the smooth muscle in the arteries and the blood vessels of the uh, corpora cavernosa, which is these represented by these circles here. Corpus spongiosum here. This is your, your urethra. And so what happens here is you have the blood vessel like this, you have the, the lumen here, and then you have the muscle kind of like this. These fibers, they come in and they stimulate relaxation. So then you have kind of dilation of the of the blood vessel because of the, the smooth muscle relaxation. Now what that does is, is it opens up um, you know blood flow into this region which allows to give you the erection. So the somatic the sympathetic fibers at the same time are also going through this inferior hypogastric plexus. And so what they do is you know they'll come from the superior hypogastric plexus or from the sympathetic chain and then they'll travel down into the prostate and more so into the ejaculatory ducts, which um, are going into the prostatic portion of the urethra. So prostatic urethra. And then you have the ejaculatory ducts here, kind of going from the seminal vesicle. And then the vas is coming in as well. So that's your vas. And all this is, you know, bringing in this, um, you know, semen and sperm, which then goes into the prostatic urethra. So what the sympathetic fibers do is they come in and they stimulate this. So they help move this process along by stimulation, stimulating contraction of smooth muscle fibers in these ejaculatory ducts um, that involve the seminal vesicle and the vas to help propel um, the ejaculate into the urethra, into the prostatic urethra. Now to kind of sum all of this up, I want to talk about you know a common phrase used to remember this, which is point and shoot. So you have point and then shoot. Now point stands for P point parasympathetic, which again gives you the erection. So if you remember, you have your inferior hypogastric plexus, you have your parasympathetic fibers, so your P, come in through here and stimulate va uh, vasodilation here. So the blood vessels become engorged with blood and that gives you the erection. Then you have the sympathetic fibers, which come through and they help stimulate those ejaculatory ducts um, and help propel the ejaculate from the vas and the seminal vesicle into the urethra, into the prostatic urethra to help um, move, the, move the ejaculate along. So you have shoot, sympathetic, giving you ejaculation. So it's a coordination of both the parasympathetic and sympathetic uh, nervous system. Now, lastly, what we should note here is that the somatic system, nervous system, so you have somatic fibers as well, we'll put this over here, traveling through the perineal branch of the pudendal nerve, they come through and they stimulate relaxation of that external urethral sphincter. Remember we talked about how the external urethral sphincter, EUS, that relaxes and the smooth, the smooth muscle in that sphincter, of that sphincter relaxes. And so that allows um, the urethra to be uh, open and patent and allow the ejaculate to be um, ejac ejaculated out. And so it's really a coordination to kind of summarize. It's a coordination of all three kind of divisions of the uh, nervous system here, the parasympathetic, the sympathetic, and then the, finally the somatic nervous system. Here's another cross-section 
Um, again, this is your corpo cavernosa, corpus spongy uh, cavernosum, and your, your urethra. So a clinical, um, you know, correlate here we want to talk about is erectile um, dysfunction. And what happens with that is that the male is, un unable, is unable to maintain an erection during sexual activity. And this has a variety of causes. It could be the first thing you want to think about really is cardiovascular problems. So CV, because if they have cardiovascular disease, the cardiovascular disease can affect the blood vessels in here. And so if they have cardiovascular disease of these blood vessels, that can affect their ability to um, first get blood because they could have cardio they could have disease of the you know the proximal vessels to the penis so it could be a problem of getting blood to the penis and a problem with the blood vessels involved in 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 uh, directly involved with the erection as well and then it also could be a problem with diabetes same problem diabetes can affect these blood vessels as well and affect blood flow it's all about blood flow with these two cardiovascular and diabetes um, so those could be so if the patient's a diabetic that might be they might, you know, they might need to have their diabetes controlled better to to help with their erectile dysfunction. Um, it also could be a neurological problem. So if they had pelvic surgery um, on the pelvis and injured one of the nerves, specifically, you know, the par the pudendal nerve or the perineal branch. Big example there is a prostatectomy, which is um, a surgery f usually for prostate cancer, where you where they you know can either do it robotically or laparoscopically, and they remove the entire prostate. And so with that, what happens is, is you know, the nerve can get, um, the perineal branch of the pudendal nerve can get damaged during this procedure, and that can cause erectile dysfunction. You may have heard the, you know, as references procedures, the uh, nerve-sparing prostatectomy. That's what these procedures seek to do is prevent damage to that nerve, the perineal branch of the, uh, the pudendal nerve, so that to help maintain um, in these men, postoperatively help them maintain erectile um, erectile function and so the other thing is is you'll see these on tv commercials all the time is the uh the advertisements for the drug therapies for this and so these drug therapies what they do is they're phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors now what does that mean so phosphodiesterase is an enzyme that it catalyzes the um it catalyzes the breakdown of cyclic GMP, GMP into just GMP. And so what happens is, is if you have this drug that comes in and inhibits and blocks it, and so what it does is it increases your cyclic GMP levels. Cyclic GMP um, is you know in, in, increased in these um, vessels here, and that helps keep the blood vessels in the corpus cavernosum um, relaxed. Cyclic GMP is a muscle, kind of a smooth muscle relaxant. So if you keep these, this, these levels elevated, helps keep the mus the smooth muscle relaxed, help keeps the blood vessels dilated, and um, helps them maintain erection. And that concludes our discussion of male autonomics and also the pelvis in general.